Hey, welcome. We are going to uh, talk about the last days in this video. There's been a lot of interest in it, so uh, we're devoting about a month uh, to this topic. We could probably talk a, an entire year. Every day new things are unfolding uh, regarding the last days, but we want to look in the Bible and see uh, what the Bible says regarding this and see if things are taking place now that would give us hints that we are close to the last days. So let's jump right in. Peace, safety, ignoring the signs, Jesus will come suddenly is the title of this page. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write you. This is Paul writing to Thessalonica. You know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And we know how that would happen suddenly and without warning. Now, while people are saying peace and safety or assuming that things are okay, Destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman. They will not escape. Now, first of all, let's back this up from the bottom up. Uh, labor pains of a pregnant woman. You know that when a woman is uh, uh, with child and you can see the signs within her, her belly that she is fixing to give birth. So are there signs that would show that the end time is near? Well, part of that, if we continue backing up, there will be a, a false uh, belief that there is peace and safety, that things are going well, um, and then the destruction will come. Or And if we're talking about right in the middle of, of the tribulation, if, if, if we're talking about after the rapture or in the seven-year period that Daniel speaks of in the last days, then maybe this is referring to the Antichrist, and he will bring a peace and safety, and then the destruction of the world. Or it could be the same thing as, as taking place here uh, in Noah and Lot's day. Let's look at these passages. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eat he's talking about when when the Son of Man comes. People were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. So it's just going to be like an ordinary, uh, less peaceful, we'll use that word since we're looking at that scripture, day when Noah entered the ark. And then the flood came and destroyed them all. So it was a surprise to them, not thinking that anything was abnormal or out of the ordinary. It was the same days in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking and buying and selling and planning and building, just going on with life, uh, focused on their own life rather than the things of the Lord and living for him. But the day that Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. So that destruction will come in a time that we're thinking we have peace, we have safety. Things don't look like they're going to end anytime soon. Uh, we'll just go on about our life. But then the father says to the son, go get them. No man knows the hour but the father. Uh, Jesus told us that, that in his plans for humanity to come and join him. And that is his plan. He wants us to be with him. Uh, he knows the day alone. No one can predict that day. But when things seem like they're moving into peace and safety uh, for many in the world, that doesn't mean everyone's going to be uh, experiencing peace and safety because it also speaks of wars and rumors of wars and, and famines and earthquakes, things like that. So it just depends on different things going on around the world uh, at any given time. Uh, a family's going through the death of a loved one, or a family's going through the loss of a job, or a family's going through uh, wonderful things where the birth of a child, you know, so there's a lot of these are like, you can see a variation of things taking place. But the main message would be, I, I think, just be ready that Christ could come back for us at any time. He, his second coming is proclaimed. And Part of that will look like regular life. It'll look like we're just going on out our regular days uh, of life, planting, selling, building, and then suddenly the Lord will come back. That's that's kind of what we're talking about in this uh, first slide. We've got nine slides for you today. Here we are in the second one. Let's consider the access we have of the Bible today, but still people do not seek or care about truth. They are moves on, talking about us in these days, swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And I believe this scripture would hint that we are in the last days. I mean, if you if you want knowledge, 
Uh, I was talking to some of my family this weekend. We were talking about having to build certain things, and someone has placed that knowledge on the Internet. Or if you have a question about uh, a passage of Scripture, you can find someone talking about it on the, on the uh, on YouTube or a, or a TikTok video or their Facebook or whatever. Uh, and if you want knowledge, uh, you can go to school. You can study just about anything you want to. And, and this speaks of today. Uh, this is why I use this as one of the signs is that we are always learning, but are we learning the things that are in, important? And, and, and you see many people that even learn themselves out of a relationship with God, uh, even to the point of letting naturalism or an understanding of the, the evolution of mankind and the world uh, become a God. We know looking into the uh, to the explosion of all things, that you don't get nothing from nothing, that there has been a creator, and yet science has pushed God uh, right out of the way in their quest for knowledge. And, and that's just an example, but this is definitely a sign that we're always learning, but uh, the truth of God is one of those things that uh, very few will seek in truth. They're, we're always wanting to know more. Uh, I see some of those videos where uh, people are asked on the street, uh, you know, where is this or what is this map or who was the president during this time or whatever, and you see people answering with ridiculous uh, uh, answers, not knowing uh, just the basics of life. And uh, But they'll know a lot of things, but that's the point. We, we know a lot of things, but are we knowing the things that are important? And this is just one of those signs that, you know, you, you're not recognizing the sign of the times. And, and this is important, that we learn who the truth is. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if you want to come to the Father, you do it through Christ. All right, going on. Uh, this is Peter talking. You must understand that in the last days, scoffers, or that, that means people that will laugh at us, they will come, scoffing, following their own evil desires. They will say, excuse the dog in the background, where is this coming that he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, God's word, uh, the heavens came, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. The earth came out of water uh, that was from the, the first day of creation. And by these waters, also the world of that time was deluged or, or flooded and destroyed. And by the same word, the present heavens and the earth, they were reserved for fire. So Peter was told by Christ, and he shares this with us, that there is a fire coming in these last days uh, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. That God will burn up, uh, he will allow... Um, earthquakes, volcanoes, um, things to fall from the sky, and it could be a nuclear fallout. We don't know the exact way that this is going to take place, but the earth will definitely take on a, a fireball uh, type appearance in these last days, and people are going to laugh. No, 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 this will never happen. But listen, if, if you truly just think about how close we are, there's this um, this thing called a doomsday clock. And right now they say that we're a hundred seconds from doomsday because there's just this anxiety in the world that points to something's going to happen. And you're going to have two sides, uh, whether it's Russia, America, or whoever, uh, are going to get, uh, nervous and somebody's going to push the button or there's going to be a great fireball uh, caused probably by man, but this is God saying, I'm going to allow this to happen. At any rate, I'm not getting into all the details there. I'm simply saying that people laugh that the end is not coming, but but you know it is. You can, you can sense that something's not right about the world and that rather than there being peace and safety, everything's going to be fine. That's us being ignorant that man will not continue getting more evil and allow things to escalate to a place that we destroy ourselves or that even the earth right under us begins to bubble and burn over. I mean, we're sitting in here in the United States, we're sitting on a, a major volcano uh, in Yellowstone that could erupt and, and wipe our country out by smoke, smog, block out the, uh, uh, the sunlight, uh, ruin gardens, uh, just devastate just this country alone. And that's just one volcano. But the point is, it's not a laughing matter, and we need to be ready that the end is coming uh, at some point.
and we need to be ready. All right, here's a slide. Understand the devil's purpose is to set up his kingdom, destroy God's plan. So the Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, when, when the end times come, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. All right, so Satan is behind all of the other spirits and religions in the world. Uh, he's not behind the truth of Christ being the Savior, the only truth, the only one that makes sense, the only one that there's evidence that there was a person in Christ, uh, Christians being persecuted for generations to come. Even today, uh, many Christians being persecuted. I think the numbers that, um, well, I can't recall that. But the point is, uh, these other religions, these other uh, spirits that are proclaiming themselves to be true, these are taught by demons. And we need to recognize why is Satan uh, doing this? Why is he influencing other religions? Why is he raising up uh, false teachings? Well, Jesus himself said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. He's referring to a scripture over in Ezekiel. Let me read this. Uh, I've got my Bible open. I'm just going to share this with you. In Ezekiel 28, this is a prophecy against the king of Tyre who was allowed to be king, but he set himself up uh, to be prideful. And uh, there's a prophecy from Ezekiel that Tyre would fall. And, and it did. The prophecy came true. Therefore, we know that Ezekiel is a true prophet. So we go into it, it says, In the pride of your heart, you say, I am a God. I sit on the throne of God in the heart of the seas, the seas representing the people there. Uh, and he goes on, he says, but you are a mere mortal and not a God, though you think you are as wise as a God. Or are you wiser than Daniel? Is no secret hidden from you? So the questioning goes to this king of Tyre. You know, are you are you really thinking that you are a God of sorts? And it goes on from the next little bit of passage there in Ezekiel 28, talking about him. Then all of a sudden it shifts over to the influencer behind the king of Tyre. And we jump into um, verse 12. We're going to go uh, from about 13 through 17. I'm going to back up to 12. You are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So now, now, wait a minute. Now, this is not the king of Tyre. Now, Ezekiel is receiving a message from God, writing it down. This is a message about Satan, who is behind the evil king of Tyre. Here's what the Spirit tells Ezekiel to write down. You were in Eden. Now, that, that that's not the king of Tyre. The garden of God, every precious stone adorned you. And he goes through the beauty of this, of this fallen angel. Verse 14 says... You were anointed as a guardian cherub, and so I ordained you. This is God ordaining the angel, the fallen angel, Satan. Uh, you were on the holy mount of God, and you walked among the fiery stones, or the holiness of God. He was in the presence of God. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created. So angels are created. Satan, Lucifer, he was created. Till wickedness was found in you. He developed a pride within him. And then it goes on. It goes down to uh, verse 17. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. And, and that is one of these double meanings. We know some of that is not the king of Tyre. We know that references an angelic being that was in the place of God. Uh, in heaven, and that he was thrown down to the earth. And this is Christ talking about Satan being thrown down. So he wanted to set up his own kingdom. What's the purpose? Satan wants his own kingdom, and he wants to set it up. And he has established his kingdom here on earth. And God allows us to have free will, just like he allowed the angels to have free will. You serve me or get out. Same thing with us. If we serve God, we were welcomed into heaven. We get to be with him forever. That, that's the, the plain truth. God allows us to choose whether or not we're going to follow him or not. So if we choose to be with God, we call upon him through his son Christ who died for us uh, as our perfect sacrifice. So our sins will be forgiven, covered by the blood, so to speak. And uh, then we will be with him forever. That's where Jesus is right now. He's preparing a place for us. However, if the world 
decides they don't want to be with God, God will allow them freedom of choice, even though they can see God in creation. They, they know within their hearts, our hearts are set on eternity. Uh, our hearts are set on moral a moral compass of some sort that was created by God. We're not just a blob of goo that came up out of some cosmic explosion. Within us is the desire to, to do right, to do well, to, to uh, have a good life, uh, and within that, to find God. And if we seek Him, we will find Him. God will show Himself to us. It's not His desire that anybody perish or that He hide Himself from us. God wants us with Him. All right. Let's move on into John's discussion here. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what Satan does. He is a thief. He's been a liar from the beginning. He wants to hurt us and uh, and to kill us. He doesn't care anything about us, although he fools us into a false uh, belief that he does care us. There's many Satanists and they don't know what they're worshiping. They have no clue and they think it's just fun and games until they get into it. And then they're carried away into uh, Satan's hell one day and they will regret it uh, because we know that's not what we were created for or why we're here on earth. There's a greater purpose. I, Jesus, have come that they may have life. That's why we're here and have it to the fullest, to have a purpose. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, the hired hand, this is a, a brief parable that is mentioned here in John, is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So he, went, when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep, runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock. And here he's talking about how um, Christ loves us enough to protect us, to go to, uh, to his death for us because he loves us so much. But Satan, he doesn't care anything about us. He just wants to steal, kill, destroy. And uh, he, he will he attacks us in various ways, finds ways to get to us in order to establish his kingdom over God's. And that's the way he's, he's paying God back for kicking him out uh, to fulfill his desire, uh, which is pride, uh, has been from the very beginning. And uh, he just wants to establish his kingdom. And at any any cost, he wants to destroy the Jews, uh, the chosen ones that are are ushering in the last days. You see there's uh, the 144,000 speaks of the Jews in the last days. And, and Christ will come, deliver them, because they will uh, eventually, as a whole, uh, believe in the Messiah. But for us right now, uh, we need to recognize that Satan has a plan and he is using his deceiving spirits uh, to influence the world to follow him, to run from God at any cost. He doesn't care uh, anything about anyone. His, his desire is to have us destroyed. And he's been, a, uh, he's been a, a liar from the beginning. And we need to recognize that. And that's happening right now. You can see the deceit, deceitful behavior, uh, the Antichrist behavior is taking place. The false Christ or the Antichrist is coming, and um, his spirit is already here. Uh, scripture already talks about there's been many Antichrists or many people that uh, walk for uh, Satan. But let's see what it says here in 2 Thessalonians. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we're talking about the last days, when he comes and are being gathered to him, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs. So there's some rebellion that's going to take place in the last days. The man of lawlessness is going to be revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or worshipped. And he's, he so he will set himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. So why do I use this? Now, this is definitely in the tribulation, but we know that this man of lawlessness is already being formed and groomed and prepared. Um, this person may not know that he is going to be the most powerful man on the earth under the influence of the dragon or Satan. And uh, I'm, I'm simply saying that this person is coming. He may already be here, but we don't know who he is. He will be revealed uh, at, at some point, uh, and then the Lord will come. So the, the point is not to say that the Antichrist is visible now, but that that spirit is on the earth and it is moving forward until Christ takes away the church. And when the church is gone, the spirit of God that's within the church, that's doing the will of Christ, uh, the will of God, God living in us through his spirit. Uh, when that spirit, the church is taken away, 
it will be seven years of, of all hell will break loose, so to speak, and it will be a terrible time on this earth. That is when the Antichrist, who doesn't know, we don't know who he is, but he will be revealed. He will exalt himself over everything. Uh, and, and it's a perfect setup right now for this to begin to take place. All right. I'm not saying that we know who he is yet, um, but I, I would I would say that he is probably alive and Satan is grooming him and preparing him right now at this hour. Uh, that spirit is is all over the world, just pure evil. So when the church is taken away, his lies and displays will deceive even more. You know what is holding him back? Holding what back? Holding the devil back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. And that's the Antichrist. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one, we're talking about Christ here, who holds it back, who holds him back, not allowing him to have that authority yet, will continue to do so till he, as Christ, pulls back, takes us out of the way. And then the lawless one, when Christ steps back out of the way, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow. So the, the, the Antichrist, after he's revealed, he will be overthrown eventually. We are on the winning side uh, with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. So the rapture takes us away, and then seven years later, he comes back and destroys the Antichrist. Good, good scripture. All right, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. That's his plan to, to take over his kingdom. He will use all sorts of displays of power. We're talking false miracles and things uh, through the signs and wonders that will serve a lie. Uh, there will even be one of his, uh, his, his people, his, his followers, Satan's followers, will appear to have died for three days and come back to life. And there will be great deception. And uh, you, can, you can just look in the news media today and see some of the deception. Uh, I remember seeing a video of it looked like there was just a massive war uh, that the news played up as a war. And later on, we found out it was just some target practice of some good old boys in, in the state of Kentucky that were fighting, uh, not fighting at all. They were just target shooting and they all did it at the same time. And it looked like a battlefield. But the news media deceptively played that up as a battle uh, that was taking place. And uh, it's just, I'm, I'm telling you, the deception will come even worse than it is now uh, as the Antichrist uses these signs and wonders to prove who he is and to establish himself over the world as the as the leader, as the Messiah, and many will be fooled, even, even the elect, if that's possible. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth. So there's still a truth. That, that's what we need to seek. What is the truth in all of this? And if, it's, if it was in the Quran or if it was in the, the uh, Book of Mormon or if it was in the, uh, the, the, the Vedas, the, uh, the Buddhist, uh, the, the Krishna, whatever, if those were truth and we could see that they were truth through fulfilled prophecies or, or words that, that made sense or things that, that were verifiable through archaeology, through history, um, then, then we would follow that. But I'm simply urging you right now, Let's search out the truth. If you don't believe what I'm saying, get into the scriptures yourself and find out, is this the true word of God? And if it is, then we need to follow it. But people refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends, let's jump down here, a powerful delusion. He sends a powerful... Now, that sounds strange that God would send something until you get into the real Greek word. What does that mean? It's Pempe uh, allows the choice to be made. So God allows people to choose. This, this word Pempe actually is where we get our word pimple. It means a swelling up. Uh, allows the choice to be made. Um, swelling up. They swell up themselves and they are in a powerful delusion. So God allows these people to swell up in themselves, to, to, to come to a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And the lie is that God is not the one way. There's not a, a supermarket choice where you just go through and pick a religion, and that's how you get to God. He has one way, and that's through His Son. So the lie is any other way besides uh, the way that Scripture points to Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. And so that will, that all will be condemned. Um, who will not believe? 
who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in their wickedness. All right, a lot of stuff there. Boy, we could spend more time, but for the sake of time, I need to move on and go to the next. So here's one of the best scriptures that talks about the last days. Um, it is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And all of these yellow words are the words that are within. Uh, I'm, I, this is We're almost done, but I'm just, I want to go over this because uh, many people just skim over this and they don't recognize what is the depths of what Paul is saying. But I believe he was truly inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this down. I want to go over it with you just for a little bit. Let's spend a, a couple of minutes just talking about this one verse. Uh, actually, it's a uh, two, three, four, and five. So four verses here. Um, what is it going to look like in the last days, these terrible times, which really uh, could be translated, it's grievous. Uh, it grieves us to see that these days are becoming like this in these last days. So what's it going to look like? People will be lovers of themselves. Well, what, what does that mean, lovers of themselves? they The love for self takes a higher place than the love for God. And Deuteronomy chapter 6 says that we should love God with all of our heart. He takes the place in our heart over ourselves. But in these last days, people will love themselves more than they will love God. And you see that everywhere. How about lovers of money? What does this mean? They're consumed with self, ultimately leading to greed rather than just contentment. And I'm not saying you can't have nice things. You can't have a, a clean home or a vehicle, uh, even a boat or whatever. But we can't let those things take us down a path of where we just want more and more and more. We need to be able to find contentment. In these last days, Satan will use that as one of his tricks to lead us down to become lovers of money. Be careful not to become addicted to wanting to be a millionaire or wealthy or, or whatever. Boastful. This is another thing that we're going to see in these last days. Conceited, caring about having a name in print or being the center of attention, whether it's uh, YouTube. And my, my YouTube account has nothing to do with uh, trying to get millions of followers. I simply want to share the truth with my small group of, of friends, the people that are uh, my little subscribers. Uh, this is not for fame, but there are people that that's all they care about. They just they they deliberately push and push the envelope, hoping that more people will watch them. And that becomes their, uh, their, their fall. So let's go on proud. Um, and in today's world, we see that it's an arrogance looking down on others, not caring about others and only wanting their way. And there's many people that look down on other people and we should not do that because I, I assure you, we're all equal at the foot of the cross. None of us are better than any. There, there's one God and we're not it. Uh, abusive. The New American Standard Bible says revilers, if you see that word. What does this abusiveness mean? It's those who elevate themselves over others and they denigrate or belittle other people. Looking down on someone else. Very similar to the pride. Disobedient to parents. I don't even have to talk about this one. We see that everywhere. Undermining of the family without gratitude and respect to the parental figures. Uh, this... This gratitude is totally missing in many families, recognizing that our, it was our parents that gave us food, gave us clothing, gave us shelter. And I know there's many uh, parents out there that are uh, they're, they're struggling to do this. And there's probably a reason for that. You know, maybe their parents didn't train them up in the right way. But at any rate, we should still be thankful. Even if our situation is bleak, uh, we, we need to try to be as thankful as we can. Ungrateful. This is ignoring the grace that's bestowed upon us, regardless of how it comes, uh, especially being ungrateful to God for being graceful to us, uh, despite our sin, in spite of our sin, uh, that he sent his son to love us. We need to be very grateful to him for that. Uh, in the last days, we will see this unholiness. This is driven to satisfy their own self-passions and lust, just pure unholy. Uh, verse 3 of this passage says, without love. What does that mean? That's a, a worldly fake love at the best. It looks like they may have some love, maybe, but it's a what can you do for me kind of attitude. So they don't care about anyone else. Don't show the love to anyone else. It's all about them. Unforgiving. There's no compromise. There's no reconciliation. Nothing matters but doing as they please. Just don't give a rip. Uh, slanderous. This is doing the work of Satan as accusers. That's who, the, that's who Satan is. He's the great accuser uh, uh, to others. As accusers to heart. I don't know why I put that in there like that, but slanderous is, is being an accuser like Satan is. That's following their father, Satan. And we'll see that in these last days. Everybody pointing the finger. It's not my fault. It's everybody else's fault. 
without self-control. This is making haphazard decisions and doesn't care uh, what this person does. They're a slave to their own desires. And uh, that we see that all over the place. People doing things and we ask, why did you do that? I don't know. You know, that that mentality is just haphazard, not even caring what they're doing, not even trying to do better. Um, there's brutalness in these last days and insensitive or attacks their opponents without care, not even caring about anyone. And just brutal. I should have highlighted this one in yellow as well. Not lovers of good. Basically, they're loving uh, what should be hated. Uh, the scripture talks about uh, what is evil becomes good and what is good becomes evil. See that all over. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Treacherous. This is when we're brothers against brothers, brutal hate, turning against loved ones. Even in the church, we see that in the church, that sometimes the churches themselves turn in on themselves. If there's no one else to hate, they hate themselves. And this treachery exists uh, everywhere. Uh, so a rash behaviors in these last days, reckless, caught up in their own uh, on self so much that they don't see the things around them that are occurring all right, this is a reckless behavior, and, and that, that's happening all over. People don't even recognize that we are in the last days, that things are unraveling as we speak, but people are just pretending, sticking their head, head in the sand, so to speak. All right, conceited, uh, a very high view of themselves, head in the clouds, can't see one's real situation. That's true, that's true. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Uh, this is just sinful pleasures. Let me move this for a second over the love of God and having a form of godliness. I should have highlighted that in yellow as well. A form of godliness, but denying its power. This is people in church allowing Satan to delude us. So we don't want Satan to come in and and help us to pretend that we're actually having church or pretend that we're worshiping Um that that's gonna we're gonna see that type of behavior, especially in the church in these last days, where the church looks like a church, but it's really just something. It's a show, or it's more of a you know, entertain me, you know, teach me something good today. Give me just a little bit of a word to encourage me. No, oh no, don't tell me about sin. I just want to hear how I can have a better life. And, and this is all they worry about rather than all of eternity that's coming. So in these last days, these grievous, terrible times are, are already here. I would say this. There's never been such evil and such disheartening behaviors of the world as we see today. This is definitely a sign of, of the last days. All right. Getting close to the end of this. The Spirit of God is being poured out in this generation as a sign says, um, and I can't remember where this passage is. I'm sure you could do a Google search. For, I should have put this in before I uh, posted this, but this is definitely in the scripture. Um, maybe after I read it, I can remember where it is. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons, your daughters will prophesy. I, I think this is out of Joel. Uh, Peter even referred to this in uh, the third chapter of Acts, I think. All right, so in the last days, the sons and daughters, they'll prophesy, or that is to teach. They, there's be, going to be much teaching about the Word, and it's all over the Internet. It really is. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions, and this is taking place. You can go on um, YouTube channels and type in dreams I had about God or a vision I have of God, and many people right now in these days um, are seeing this, are, are hearing of God and learning of God. I know somebody personally who... God came and visited them in a hospital, and as a result, and this is a person in India, as a result, she came to know God. And I know another person in India, uh, he was in the water drowning after he was bathing. A, a flood came through, and a hand reached up, and the person said, God, if you're there, if you hear me, and you want to answer my prayer, save me, and I will serve you the rest of my days. And a hand reached up, pulled him out of the water from drowning, and then he opened his eyes, and uh, within that that vision, that situation, uh, there was nobody there. There was nobody anywhere around him, but yet there was a hand of God that pulled him out of that water, kept him from drowning. And I'm telling you, uh, the Spirit of God is going to be poured out in these days. Uh, this is this is why we have another sign that the Holy Spirit is trying to wake people up. There's a there's there's all of this is taking place all at the same time. So it's multiple signs pointing to the truth that we are at the last days. 
I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire, billows of smoke. The sun will turn into darkness. These are things that Revelation is talking about that's coming in the days uh, of the future before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the earth is going to just fall apart. Remember what Peter said, that the earth is going to uh, be destroyed by fire, not by water like it happened in Noah's day. But in this day, uh, there's a fire coming that will dissolve the earth and uh and and of course christ when he comes back and all of the believers come in on white horses with him um fire will come from heaven out of his voice he will speak all of the evil will be destroyed and you know it it, it always question i always had this question about why did god take six days to create the heaven and the earth and maybe we can talk about that in a moment but uh you know he could have done it in one moment and instantly Christ, when he comes to establish his millennial reign for a thousand years, he can speak to the planet and say, be made new. And he says, I will make all things new and, and the earth will be made new again so that we can live on it. And there will be uh, kingdoms all over the world that will honor and pay uh, our life respects to Christ as our king of kings, the Lord of Lords. Christ will uh reign here, take back his uh, inheritance. The earth will be his and Satan will be locked away. So those days are coming. So uh, we're talking about all these things that are taking place here. This is after the tribulation begins, but nevertheless, uh, you can tell how the earth is unraveling. Things are not right about the earth and it's not going to last forever. And we know what we hear about these asteroids and these volcanoes and earthquakes and things that point to the destruction of the earth. Uh, and I'm, I'm just simply saying uh, this is before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Uh, you can already see signs that some of these things are already escalating, moving in that direction. All right. And let me let me just clarify. These things happen during the tribulation before the coming of Christ in the heavens to this earth to establish his reign and destroy Satan. Those things do not happen. I don't believe uh, that's what this says. Uh as the rapture takes place. The rapture takes place. The church is taken out of this earth. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb for seven years, and there's more scriptures to refer to that. Uh, but while we're gone, all hell breaks loose on the earth, and that's when it seems that these things happen. The moon, the blood, the sun turned to darkness. Uh, most of those things happening on the earth in the last part of the great tribulation that's coming. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the good news. We call on Christ and we will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. Israel will be delivered. All of the world will collapse in on Israel there at the last battle of Armageddon. And Christ will come and deliver them because they will cry out, save us, Jesus. Jesus will come and save Israel and those that believe on the earth at that point. And from that point on, Christ will reign as the, the king of kings on this earth. And all of us that believe him, that call him our savior, who want to be with him, we will be on this earth uh, from that day forward. All right. So Peter warns us the time is near. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anybody to perish. It's important, but that everybody will come to repentance. That's why these signs are given to us in Scripture, just enough to know. If we seek, we can find the truth. We know through some of these signs, we already see some of these things taking place. God doesn't want us to perish. He wants us to come to repentance and to know him. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will disappear with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Okay? He'll have to restore it. He'll have to resurrect the earth in order for us to live on it. Um, because there will be a uh, seizure right here, looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Now, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people should you be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward. We need to be looking, looking forward to the day of God and the speed of its coming. Now that day will bring about destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. And when we're saying heavens here, we're talking about the uh, sun, the moon, uh, falling warm wood stars, things that are spoken of in Revelation. Maybe we can talk about that in a future video. All right. And uh, But in keeping with his promise, we're looking forward to the new heaven and new earth. All right. 
uh, where righteousness dwells. And then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless and blameless and at peace with him. That That is the truth. We need to be found loving him, looking forward to him, to live with him. Let me, I, I made this in orange here. Let me, let me just say a brief comment. And it, it says with the Lord, a day is like a thousand, a thousand is like a day. Um, I'm not, I'm not a prophet. I don't claim to be other than just, I want to share the word with my friends that get on here, but I want to say one thing about this. Something in my heart tells me that one of the signs that we should recognize, uh, there's always mentioning of numbers. Numbers have meaning and value in the scripture. Uh, it comes to the point of order that God has created all of the order, the solar system, uh, the way the days work, the way the moon works, uh, a constant every month there's a, a new moon. I mean, there's just such order in the way God, it, nothing happened out of chaos, a big bang like science tries to teach us. All of these things take place with such order uh, that, you can look at numbers, things like the number three, the number seven, uh, the number 40, uh, the number 12, the number 50. Many of these things uh, mean things. And when you see a number like this, it just it registers with me that this may be one of those things to consider. I can't find it in the scripture. I just want to share something with you. This is uh, from from one brother to a, uh, to another believer. We know if we go back in the Bible and we look at the generations of Adam all the way down to Abraham, Abraham all the way down to King David, King David all the way down to Christ, and we look at now, we know that there has been uh, 2,000 years since Christ to now, about approximately, and that before that, there was approximately 4,000 years going back in generations using the scripture. We can tell that there has been 4,000, 2,000, 6,000 years. When God created the earth, he did so in six days. And that's that's just, a, it's a little confusing because I wonder why would he not just do it all in one day? He's God. He can do anything. With God, all things are possible. I think that's a sign of something at some level. And whether or not I fully understand it, or I'm not claiming to understand this for, for 100% certain. Uh, but if the earth was created in six days, what did he do on the seventh day? Seventh day was a day of rest. And if we consider what Peter's saying here, that with the Lord a day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. If we look back at the 6,000 years and we see all of these signs that are taking place that are leading us up to this point, and we can almost all Christians agree we are in the last days. You see these signs. And now we consider as Peter's talking about these last days and the things coming to uh, fruition, coming to an end, uh, you see these 6,000 years. What happens next? There's going to be a thousand years of millennial reign, a thousand years of, of peace and, 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 and just a great day to live with Christ as our king overlooking the, the world as the world should be with the, the Davidic king, Jesus Christ, an eternal king that will live forever with us. It just seems that if there was a good sign, that since there's been 6,000 years, and, and I believe the, that the earth was created in six days, that's what it says, the word yom in Hebrew, it refers to a 24-hour period, as we know 24 hours. And after this 6,000 years, there comes another 1,000 years. That seems to complete that number seven. Now, you don't have to believe that with me. Uh, I, I'm simply saying that is just one of those uh, things that has hit me as I've read through the scripture several times and I look at things, um, you know, on a level of, you know, Lord, why did you tell us this through Peter? You know, is there something more to it? That's all I'm saying. There may be, I'm not saying go in the pulpit and go preaching this. Uh, I'm not even saying that I'm right. I'm simply saying it's something to consider. And um, within that, uh, use your own discernment. But uh, if we are in the last days and it's been 6,000 years up to this point. We are close to the seventh day of rest. Who is our rest? Christ is our Sabbath. He is our day of rest. When he comes, we will have that rest that we've been wanting for since the day we were born. All right. So that is all I've got for you today. Listen, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope to have more for you next week.